So this is the video that I had planned for yesterday. <clears throat> and uh, it's a rather bizarre video, but it's an extremely well-timed video. I was surprised because uh, in uh, Putin's speech today, uh, he basically said that the United States has reneged on all of the arms control treaties under the Biden administration, the warmongering Democrats, the eco-terrorist, uh, bio-terrorist warmongering Democrats, uh, and that uh, Russia is no longer going to adhere to the treaty. Now, they did not back out of the treaty, which was good, but, uh, but they, um, uh, they said that they, you know, un unless Biden's going to give them assurances, which uh, the, uh, the, the warmongering Democrats would never do that. They're never going to give um, Russia the assurances that it needs that they can verify the uh, weapons moderation. And uh, one thing I want to point out, this is a whole different world than back in 1963. It's a much, 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 much more dangerous world. Because uh, back in 63, you had the Soviet Union and the United States. We almost blew ourselves up in 63. And then uh, after everybody backed off, cool heads prevailed. And uh, we came out with some wonderful arms control treaties. Well, the warmongering Democrats, they're completely the opposite. They literally seem to be bent on nuclear destruction of the world. So I, the reason that this video came about, <laughs> if you want to cut it off right here, it's just going to be a bizarre damn video. I, you know, I can't help it because uh, it came about because of a dream that I had. And that's how I'm going to finish up the video. I was with my dream uh, after I show you uh, the stuff that, uh, that I can do to help you at the end of the video. So let's just get into the first part because I was trying to find a good video to show what my dream looked like. And this is off of the Charlie Kirk show. Uh, I don't know what license he has. I, I, I'll never uh, monetize this video, but uh, this is just a, um, a virtual reality depiction of what a nuclear explosion would look like. Uh, so to me, it's not even real footage. Uh, so, but somebody made this. But I thought this was really cool. When we get to my dream, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Pretty cool, huh? I mean, can you believe that's computer generated? So now in my dream, there was a blinding white flash that woke me up in the middle of the night. And that's, uh, and obviously the explosion happened miles away or I would not have survived. Oh, here's the, here's the wind. In, in, in my dream, my house was buffeted by these huge winds. I was like, what in the hell? I didn't, of course, I hadn't put it together. It woke me up in the middle of the night in the dream. Now, now I see it's doing the back blast. You had the outblast, and now you've got the backblast. This is miles. Now, you might survive this, which in my dream, obviously, I did. Look at everything getting sucked up into the mushroom cloud. Now, if you're too close to that, you're obviously not going to survive. Now, this is kind of showing some of the heat. So maybe this close to the explosion, you might not survive, but you certainly would have that... These, these huge winds, you know, hurricane force winds, hell, beyond hurricane force winds, depending on where you are. This is just one. We're going to get into the numbers here in just a minute. That the Biden administration, the warmongering Democrats, want to unleash upon the world. We need arms control, people. All right, so that's it. That's the first part of the video. But I had to find something that showed the outblast and the backblast. Otherwise, the context of the video, you wouldn't understand. Because uh, when I get to the dream, you're going to be like, well, you know, if, if you hadn't seen a nuclear blast, uh, you can go to YouTube. There's all kinds of videos on them. And I, I kept thinking, well, I don't know if I want to use these because I don't want to violate any copyrights or any of that sort of thing. I don't think using a virtual video from Rumble violates anything. I could be wrong. And like I said, I will never monetize this video. Sorry, I'm trying to get everything out of the way so we can get into the, the actual uh, uh, information that you need to know. 
uh, you know, this is just off of the internet. Uh, did I go out and verify all of this with uh, multiple sources? No, but these numbers are pretty, pretty accurate. Uh, from from well, I did look at multiple websites and uh, and and you know they vary slightly, but most most everything in this uh, these numbers are um, pretty accurate. So Russia has. Uh, as of the writing of this article, according to the authors, uh, they have 1,588 um, weapons deployed on intercontinental missiles. And you just saw the virtual um, video of just one exploding. They have a range of, well, about 3,417 miles, so they can certainly strike anywhere in the United States uh, or anywhere else in the world. Uh, and they, and of course, 5,500 kilometers on heavy, uh, heavy bomber. Uh, from their heavy bomber bases, um, which host uh, aircraft capable of carrying and dropping a nuclear payload, just like we have here in the United States. The U.S. has 1,644 weapons poised the same way. So that's, I don't need to get into any more numbers. Uh, and you can you can talk about, by the way, if you, if you ever watch the videos on the ridiculous uh, stuff that came, I mean, if the neocons really believe this, we're in... I don't see how we're going to survive as a, as a human race because uh, they're, they're actually talking about, you know, how you survive a nuclear explosion. <laughs> you know, and, and they put out these ridiculous guidelines. You just go around YouTube and you can watch it. This is what the Biden administration, the warmongering Democrats are putting out. They honestly think that they're going to survive this thing. But anyway, let's uh, let's keep going. Uh, you know, the only real example we have of, of, of nuclear bombs being used uh, was in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Uh, with the force, that was about 15 kilotons to 20 kilotons of TNT. Now, if you're from the military, you know, you, you're carrying maybe 20 sticks per combat engineer of TNT, if that. So think about that. Kilotons. I mean, that's thousands and thousands of sticks of T, TNT. That's, that's a huge, huge explosion. I mean, my goodness. Thermonuclear or hydrogen bombs use the power of the... And this is kind of how it works. I thought this was interesting. I'm going to read this to you. Thermonuclear or hydrogen bombs use the power of the initial fusion reaction to fuse hydrogen atoms within the weapon. The fusion reaction kicks off yet more neutrons, which create more fission, which create... And, and on and on. Which create more fission and on and on. Okay, I understand. I was going, maybe they were being redundant. Uh... The result of the uh, Union of Concerned Scientists <laughs> should be concerned people around the world, in my damn opinion. But, you know, the Democrats, all the Democrats in the United States, you know, they're all together. War, 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 nuclear war, war, destruction of the world. Oh, my gosh. Uh, in a fireball with temperatures that match the heat of the center of the sun, thermonuclear bombs, uh, well, they... They say they've never been used, they've been tested, but never used, well, and not the hydrogen bombs anyway, but, um, so, uh, let's just talk about Nagasaki, because that's the really, the, the huge example here, I'll just read this to you. Being at ground zero of such an explosion means instant death. Well, no shit, did you see the ground zero in that video? Um, for instance, a 10 kiloton uh, nuclear weapon equivalent to the size of Hiroshima and Nagasaki would immediately kill about 50% of the people within a two mile radius of the ground detonation so if you drop that on new york city i don't know how big new york city but at least right where the bomb was dropped uh two miles uh, everybody's dead right off the bat um so an open air detonation would have a wider blast radius according to the nonprofit organization icaN um those deaths would be caused by fires, intense radiation exposure, and other fatal injuries. Some of these people would be injured by pressure from the explosion, while uh, most would be exposed to injuries from collapsed buildings and flying shroud. That's what I was talking about with the, the outward blast and the inward blast. Um, and, and so it was my, my dream that got this thing going. Um, yeah, I moved to a basement or the center of a large building. <laughs> Depends on where you are, okay? I mean, if you're, if you're a ways out, you might, that might help, for you, help, help you a little bit. Um, so, uh, and this, this is what I was talking about in my dream, okay? There would be survivors near the detonation area. However, uh, according to the International Committee of the Red Cross, you know, you got to remember that roads, train tracks uh, destroyed, hospitals leveled, doctors and nurses and first responders in the blast zone dead or injured. 
there would be few options for bringing supplies into people to help, especially given the high levels of radiation following a detonation. Survivors would carry, uh, and this is, this is when I get to my dream, you're going to love how accurate my dream was. I mean, it was just a freaking dream. Oh my God, I hadn't even thought about this. The survivors would carry a radioactive dust and would need to be decontaminated. Most would likely suffer thermal burns in initial th from the initial thermal blast, according to the book Nuclear Choices from the 21st Century, A Citizen's Guide. Uh, death could come by firestorm. Uh, depending on the terrain of the blast zone. Fires caused by the initial blast could combine and create their own self-fueling wind, which was in my dream. Oh my God, this is just getting too weird. It's just too weird beyond belief. Um, such a firestorm occurred in Hiroshima, according to the uh, Department of Energy, engulfing 4.4 square miles or 11 point square kilometers. And then this, this gets in more, more about my dream. I tell you, this is just so accurate. Radiation is the secondary and most insidious consequence of a nuclear blast. The fission bombs dropped on Japan created, created local fallout, according to uh, the nuclear choices for the 21st century. But modern thermonuclear weapon blasts from material into the stratosphere, middle layer, allowing global fallout. The level of fallout depends on whether the bomb is detonated above ground in an air blast, which worsens the global fallout and dampens. The fallout risk is most severe, and this is this is where maybe my dream was a little bit off, and we'll get into that, but I still would do exactly what I did in my dream. The fallout risk is most severe in the first 48 hours after the blast. In the absence of snow or rain, which would help pull the fallout to the ground faster, far-flung particles may have minimal radioactivity. By 48 hours after the blast, the area that is initially exposed to 1,000 uh, retigens a unit of ionizing radiation per hour will experience only 10 retigens per hour of radiation according to nuclear war survivor skills. About half the people experience a total radiation dose of 350. We're going to get into the dosages here and I'll talk about what you can do um, and what I didn't have in my dream. And so and these are the steps that I'm going to be taking. So I'll be making some future videos, not like this, you know, where I'm talking about a dream. <laughs> you know, I'm going to give you actual tools to, to help you might, you know, help you maybe, maybe just survive, uh, depending on where you are. But I mean, if there's that many nukes that get, that get flying around, I don't think anybody's going to survive. But uh, who knows, you know, maybe it'll just be a limited exchange. I doubt it. But uh, 350 retigens over a couple of days are likely to die from acute radiation poison, according to the handbook. And those are the numbers that I saw. Your survivors exposed to fallout are at high risk of cancer. Imagine that, huh? Um, so more than uh, 10, Nagasaki, they treated more than 10,000 officially recognized survivors of the 1945 blast, with most deaths in the group attributable to cancers. Leukemia rates uh, in radiation exposed victims was four to five times typical levels of the first 10 or 15 years after the blast, according to the Red Cross. And of course, you know about nuclear winter that this soot that's going to get injected into the atmosphere will probably uh, kill off whatever the bombs don't explode. But I'll just read a little bit to you about that. Uh, um, when one or two nuclear explosions would have global effects, the detonation of just 100 weapons the size of the one dropped in Hiroshima, this is what I'm saying, we're talking thousands, in 1945 would lower global temperatures below those of the Little Ice Age that occurred from roughly 1300 to 1850, according to uh, the 2012 analysis published by the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists. The impact today would be a wild and sudden climate change. So I won't get into more of the, uh, the, so what is, what's the thing that, well, I'll just get into this before I get into the dream, because you're probably not even going to want to listen to the dream. It's just a bizarre thing. But, uh, so what am I doing, um, as a result of all of this research and, and my dream and everything else? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to buy a damn Geiger counter, man. And, uh, you can get a cheap one. I was looking on Amazon. I thought for sure these things would be massively expensive. Uh, but you know what? What's what blows my mind is these Geiger counters are not electrostatic uh, discharge tolerant. Can you imagine having something to detect radiation, but it can't survive a nuclear explosion? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's so ridiculous. ESD. I mean, oh my goodness gracious! So you know, we'll get into how to protect it. Um, 
But uh, so I'm looking at various Geiger counters and when I pull the trigger on one, we'll talk about it. But uh, this is from one Geiger counters. Uh, um, I, well, they give you all the technical details about how they uh, measure everything. By the way, these things also, you can get them where they sense radon. And uh, I've always wondered what the radon levels are in my house. Uh, my wife used to say we needed to test the house up in Michigan, or my ex-wife. And uh, so I, but you know, so that's why I got to do my research. I want to, I'm probably going to get a, a better model than, than if you wanted to just buy a cheap one uh, so that I can detect other things besides uh, just radiation. And uh, when we get into the dream, you'll understand why I'm so hell-bent that I'm getting a damn Geiger counter, you know. Uh, but let's just read from the Geiger counter what they were saying. So nuclear radiation has serious effects on human health. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> Causing dementia, high blood pressure, heart disease, reduced immunity, and as well as damage to the blood and nervous system. Imagine that. Uh, the harm of nuclear radiation to the body is mainly chronic damage to the disease prolonged or to, to, to the disease, Prong, the prolonged use of computers, exposure to objects with radiation, long-term exposure to high radiation environment to make the human body organs suffer serious damage. Radiation generally greater than 100 MSV is harmful to humans. Radiation doses between 100 and 500 MSV for a long time will reduce the number of white blood cells in the human blood. Radiation in the range of 1,000 to 2,000 MSV may cause symptoms such as fatigue, vomiting, or anorexia. In a radiation dose of 2,000 to 4,000 MSV, the number of red and white blood cells in the human blood will be significantly reduced and internal bleeding may occur. Uh, what things produce radiation uh, harmful to the human body? Well, like nuclear bombs, <laughs> you know, a nuclear power plant, uh, or yeah, because we use uh, those um, in the military. A lot of the guys were messed up because of the um, the uh, we were using the depleted uranium ore in our weapons, and that's why Russia said that if we use them in Ukraine, um, they're going to consider that a, um, a a nuclear explosion and act accordingly. So let's hope that we never use the uh, depleted uranium rounds in Ukraine. Um, ionizing radiation, which is the, what I suffered when I got uh, lymphoma. Uh, computer. Uh, now, I'm not sure how intense the computer radiation is now that we've gotten rid of the old uh, CRT monitors. I, I don't think that the LED monitors uh, put out that much, but I could be wrong. They're, they're listing it in, in their list here. Radiology, medical equipment, we know about that. That's why I always worry when they're taking 16,000 x-rays. They're saying, well, it's just a little tiny dose, a little tiny dose. Yeah, when you, when you take 16 x-rays, uh, of course, industrial environments. And so here's the, um, here's the, boy, I tell you, it's a little teeny writing. So let's get into the dose and the response. Uh, so, uh, by the way, the, the radiation detectors, I thought this is cool too, because you can set an alarm on the thing so that if the radiation gets above a certain level, have you ever seen that in the movies where they're walking around and they got the radiation detector and, uh, well, usually in the movies it's just going, K -k 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 no, I would, I would just set it to a certain level, and once, once you reach that level, just give me an alarm, you know, don't, don't be talking to me the whole damn time, especially if you're fighting uh, in a battle, you don't want it giving away your position, you want it to be nice and quiet until, until you're in a lethal environment. So uh, set the alarm value, when the radiation dose exceeds the value, you set alarm alert. All right, so let's get into the dosages. Uh, so you got 5 to 20. There could be a delayed reaction. It could damage the chromosomes. Okay, so, all right. Now, this is, this is a word that I, I, I didn't look up, and I do need to. Um, 20 to 100. Temporary leukopenia. Leukopenia. L-E-U-K-O-P-E-N-I-A. I thought, I'm dyslexic. I thought that meant leukemia, but it's leukopenia. I don't know what that is. I, I guess I'll have to look it up. Um... Uh, I'll put it in the next video. 100 to 200, mild radiation sickness within hours. Now, remember the numbers from the paper, uh, because I found this interesting, because they were saying, well, I can't remember exactly, but they were given uh, much higher numbers with less uh, symptoms. But this says, no, between 100 and 200, uh, you could have vomiting, diarrhea, fatigue, and reduced resistance to infection. And then when we got into the 200 to 300 range, 
Uh, and th and by the way, I think the number was 350 in here somewhere. I'd have to go back and find it. Uh, we're not going to worry about it. I'm just giving you, this is just an advertisement off of Amazon. Um, so severe radiation sickness reaction. Symptoms are the same as above. So uh, 300 to 400. Uh, severe radiation sickness. Damage to bones and the gut. Uh, probably going to die. Uh, 400 to 1K acute premature death. And 1K to 5K acute death within days. I imagine some, a lot of them are within hours. So, uh, so we'll, I'm going to get a Geiger counter. Uh, and we'll go over that when I get it, when I pull the trigger and figure out, because I want to get one with radon detection also. And I want, if I can find one that'll survive an electromagnetic pulse, or an EMP, I think I was calling it ESD, electrostatic discharge. I, I get dyslexic. EMP, electromagnetic pulse. I want to get one that can survive that. Now, one thing I wanted to show you is uh, you can go to Amazon and order you some electrostatic bags. All right. And, uh, and so what I do is I keep all my backup devices in electrostatic bags. And these were dirt cheap. I mean, it, it really didn't cost me that much to order these. At Amazon, and of course, you probably get stuff in electrostatic bags. You know, these these are just ones that I got like hard drives and stuff in, and I just keep them, and I uh, put them all down in here. And then, uh, you know, here's my backup devices. We went over that in a previous video, and I, when I'm not using them, keep them in an electrostatic bag. You might come out of the uh, an electromagnetic pulse with some of your uh, computer, at least your data intact. I'm sure your computers are going to be fried. Uh, and then, of course, I've got the small USB drives. All right, so this is the point where you probably want to hang up. So let's get into this dystopian, crazy-ass dream that I had. Oh, my God. And, uh, and, and, you know, that's why I said I want to make this into like an Outer Limits uh, episode or a um, or a Twilight Zone or something, man. I mean, because it was so real. I mean, you ever had those dreams where, you know, you wake up and you, you were with a, rel a dead relative? And you could have sworn, I mean, they were right there with you. I mean, that happens to me occasionally. Uh, this was this was really like that. So in the dream, the, the, it starts out with this, this blinding flash. And, you know, my, my bedroom uh, has uh, blinds all the, on all the windows. So it's pretty, really dark at night. I like it nice and dark. And... Uh, and it's very, very quiet where I'm at. And uh, so the, 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 it, in the dream now, the blinding white flash woke me up because, I mean, it was that bright. And what was scary was it lasted a lot longer than, than like a, a lightning. And so, you, you know, it, when you're shocked up out of your sleep, you're going like, what the hell was that? You know, what, what is that? And then it, it sounded like a freight train, just like a tornado coming in. And that, that first wave uh, hit the house and the whole damn house was shaking all over. Now, th the possibility of me um, surviving something like that, uh, depending on the length from the bath, because in my dream, the, the nuclear explosion took place at Cape Cod. And uh, so that's, uh, what, about 90 miles away or so? So, you know, I, I'm not even sure what the blast would be at this far away from it, depending on the size of the bomb. And of course, and then there were there were subsequent flashes where I'm sure Tampa Bay was getting hit, probably Gainesville, maybe Jacksonville, you know. And so, so I and and you know each each the house was just taking a buffeting and uh, we were, what the out blast and the in blast and you know and you could hear debris flying and hitting the house. Now my house, I've got a reinforced front door, solid steel, and I've got a reinforced garage door for hurricanes. And I'm putting in, uh, and, and in, the, in the dream, I already had the windows, but I don't have them yet. But I, I have stormproof windows going into the house, uh, which I, that's something else I want you to think about. So, so, so my windows weren't imploding, you know, like a normal window would. With that type of buffeting, the windows would have just gone blown out of the house, and we'll get to that portion of the dream. So, I mean, so everything's dark. Of course, now your electricity's gone. No water, no gas. No electricity, you know, and, uh, and, and I hadn't uh, taken proper precautions with uh, some of my flashlights. And so the LEDs have been blown out by the uh, electromagnetic pulse. So I was really dark at night. I couldn't find anything. I said, well, I just wait till the next day and see if anything left is going to work because I hadn't put my flashlights in these electrostatic bags. 
you know, even though I kept my computer equipment in there. And, uh, and so I was like, holy shit, what, you know, because obviously at this point, you know, it was a nuclear explosion. And the same with my radios. I didn't have, I, I, it turns out, and I can't explain this from the dream. That's why I said it was a bizarre dream. One of my radios was working, and, uh, and it's a weather slash uh, AM, FM, regular little radio. And that's the only thing I had to listen to what was going on in the world. Uh, all my other radios, the, the uh, transistors have been blown out, which that's another thing I'm going to look into is to, to get a uh, shortwave slash uh, um, a, a nice, really nice uh, uh, radio with good reception. And I'm going to put it in uh, multiple electrostatic bags and I'm never even going to break it out. I'm just going to leave it in there for, for a major emergency like this. So, because, uh, you know, and that was that was the wild part. It was just like being in that movie with uh, Will Smith because um, I couldn't get anything. I couldn't get nothing. I just sit there and, and we're going to get into the, the later part of the dream. So uh, the next day I woke up and, uh, you know, I, I walked over to the windows and I just opened the blinds and I looked out and it was like a dystopian nightmare. You know, most of my neighbor's houses, the windows were blown out of the houses and, uh, and you could see the uh, radioactive uh, uh, dust just coming down like a, a like a snow cloud. You know, some of it's still on fire uh, material just coming down. I was I was worried in the dream that my roof might catch on fire. <coughs> and uh, but and, and what was wild was, you know, even on my street, uh, there were people out in the street walking with the dust all over them because they're, they're, you know, they're out and some of the houses were on fire. And, and I don't think it was from the nuclear explosion. It was either from the, uh, the, the particulate coming down out of the atmosphere or they had suffered a gas explosion because I, I imagine some of the gas veins had blown up. And I, I in, in my thought in my head was, how did my house survive so well? Well, you know, storm proof windows, doors, and plus I've got these huge oak trees and a fence right next to the back of my house. And that buffeted a lot of the wind, even though some of the fence was blown over. I was thinking, man, that fence saved a hell of a lot of damage on my house. And, uh, and so, you know, that, that day, I, what are you going to do? I, I was kind of just going around assessing the damage and I got together, you know, I've got my chemical warfare suit. I got my gas mask out you know and i'm just kind of going through through the through the numbers and i uh, you know one decision that i made that i was real proud of in in my dream was i have a 50 gallon uh, water tank and uh, that 50 gallon water tank is an well it's an emergency water supply a lot of people around here have gone tankless and i thought about going tankless but not only is it more expensive up front anyway i uh, the uh, it doesn't give you an emergency water supply and I thought well you know what at least a hot water tank is a is an emergency water supply so that's why I went with it so I said well okay I've got 50 gallons of water I've got four gallons of um, distilled water that I keep on hand because I you know I don't like to keep water too long in the plastic so I mean I know you can go and buy you know the, the whole huge things at Walmart of uh, bottled water um, you know I keep and of course I have bottled water that I use for on a daily basis, you know, in my fridge. And that's, you know, the, uh, um, the Yetis. I got a bunch of Yetis uh, that I use when you know, I go out, especially in the summertime when it's hot. So I had those. And then I got to thinking, you know, I said, well, I got the toilet bowls. Because I'm really, you know, I'm, I, I didn't know. I, I, and at, obviously I, I didn't have a Geiger counter. So I don't know the radiation levels as they exist in the house. I just know that I cannot step foot outside the house. And I was feeling bad for all the people that were stumbling around outside. Uh, it wasn't too many of them because there's not that many around my neighborhood. And of course, I also weaponed up. I got out every weapon in the house and I p staged it all around in case somebody tried to break into the house. But I mean, most everybody, would, if they got that do dose of radiation exposure from all of the the um, stuff coming down without decontamination, they were going to be dead inside of two weeks anyway. So I knew, and I can't bring a radioactive person into my house because they'll contaminate my house. So all I could do is just kind of day after day, look out the window and watch, you know, every now and then you'd see somebody just collapse and fall over, drop dead. And then you just, you just go like, oh, hell no. And luckily, I, I, in, in the dream, I had lots of books. And so I would just sit and read. I've got all these fantasy novels, and most of them I've forgotten. And I've just got hordes and hordes of books, and I, that's all I could do. And each day, 
in the dream, I would wake up and I would, uh, I, I would go through the radio to see if I could get somebody. I also, I had some walkie-talkies that, that I, they have a very limited range. And I would go through all the frequencies on the walkie-talkies. You know, I think they only got like 15 channels. And I would try those every day, but, you know, wanted to save my batteries just in case. And, you know, so I would see, is anybody out there? Can anybody hear me? Now, as far as like hygiene and everything else, you know, at first I was using the toilets, but I, like I told you, I wanted to keep the toilet bowls for the water supply. So I fished all the water because I didn't want, I couldn't go outside. You cannot, I could not go outside and I did not know, well, this is 48 hours. I was determined in the dream to stay in the house for months is if I could. Uh, which is it's, it's just funny because of all your preparation. I've got a 50 gallon uh, water tank outside my house, a water barrel, and then I've got a lake right over here that I can pump water out of. But if it's radioactive, and by the way, my filter will filter out radioactive particles. So I planned for everything except the ability to be able to leave my house <laughs> you know, so that I could go get the water. And I was punching myself in the dream. I was going, you damn idiot. You didn't get a Geiger counter, so you can't measure the radiation. I mean, because if you went outside and, the, and it wasn't too bad. Now, yeah, I've got the chemical warfare suit and I've got the boots, the chemical warfare boots. And I've got the, ga the gas mask and I've got the cover over my head. But once you go out and contaminate that chemical warfare suit, what are you going to do? You can't bring it home, you know, put it in the garage and contaminate your garage, right? So I, I, that's why I wanted things to, to all of the, uh, you know, because at first, you know, it's, it's an exponential decay uh, of, the, uh, of the radiation. So I figured if I waited long enough, it should be pretty decayed and I should be safe in my chemical warfare suit and then just come home. And, uh, you know, you can't, I don't want to rinse it because of the charcoal, but I can always get out and brush it, brush it really, really well, take it off carefully. And then, you know, when I did put it back on, try not to touch the outer fabric and then reuse it multiple times. Um, same, and that was another thing in, in, the, in the dream, and I got to check on this. I didn't have but a couple of the filters for the gas mask. You can only wear those, those filters for so long, especially if you're in a radioactive environment. So I'm thinking, am I gonna, am I gonna make it? And the, the weird part was, I was the only one. I was all alone in this thing. And you'd think, well, and I was, I was kind of losing it, you know, I was, because I, I kept thinking, well, is it worth surviving? But I, I just knew in the dream I wanted to live. I just wanted to live. So finally, you know, after a month, well, and this is this is the gross part. This is the really, 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 really gross part. You might want to just cut it off right here. Well, of course. I filled up the toilet bowls and I can't flush because I got no water, right? I can't go outside to get water and I'm not going to take my potable water and put it in the tank so that I can flush the toilet. So now you can't use the toilets no more. And of course, the smell coming out of the bathrooms in the dream was horrible. And so I shut the doors to the bathrooms, you know, and I said, well, I just won't use it. You can't take a shower anyway, right? Um, you know, I brought the toothbrushes into the, the main area. Uh, so that I could, you know, at least uh, use just a tiny bit of water. Now, I had lots of soft drinks and everything else. And then I did have some beer and liquor. So I could, I, there were days I just got drunk for days on end and, you know, and just didn't want to deal, deal with it. I got depressed uh, in the dream now, in the dream. So then, uh, then uh, after, after using the bathrooms, what are you going to do? Are you going to crap on the floor? No, I got buckets in the garage. So then I started using the buckets. And I filled up the buckets with uh, with sewage, and I, I but I couldn't I didn't want to take them outside. So now my garage stinks like hell because all the, the 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 sewage that's in my garage. So finally, after about a month or a month and a half, I I I, I just said if I die I die I gotta I gotta get out of here, and I uh, you know the of course the first things that I did was I took the buckets out of the garage and just put them out you know, way the hell away from the house and dumped them out as best I could and just put them there. I was going to let the rain take care of them or take them over to the lake and wash them out there. And then, of course, I, I got the water. I didn't want to use the water in the rain barrel because it figured it was the most uncontaminated water. Um, but And by the way, in the dream, the golf cart was working. The golf cart just this is old, old, old golf cart and the batteries worked. And so I took you know, I couldn't recharge the batteries, but I did have a limited lifespan. So I took 
uh, the buckets once the rain had washed them out and I went over to the lake and then I could flush the toilets now with the, with the water from the lake. And that's about it. I kind of woke up at that point and that was it. <laughs> I was like, what the? <laughs> pardon my French. What the fuck kind of dream is that, man? <laughs> I mean, what the hell? I was like, what in the hell kind of dream was that? Oh man, I'm sorry. I took, I did this video, but I was just thinking, how, look how well prepared I was. I had the chemical suit, the gas mask. Uh, of course, I've got the ability to cook all my food because I've got, uh, I have propane, lots of propane gas for the gas. Things. Everything lasted me for the time, but the inability to leave my house, you know, and, and, or do anything or get in touch with anybody. And that's another thing I might look into as a ham radio. I might try to become a ham radio operator because I tell you what, it would have been nice, just like in those those dystopian movies, it wouldn't it have been great to be able to get on your ham radio and try to talk to people around the world because, you know, there's probably pockets of people that survived if, if you did. I don't think anybody in the United States would, but I mean, in the dream, I did. So who knows? All right, that's it. Peace out. Stay free. It's good, 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 good to live in the free, free Republican state of Florida. And I just... I was just going to make a bizarre video. It was just a bizarre, bizarre thing. Uh, and of course, Putin coming out saying he's backing out of the, well, not backing out of the treaty, just not going to obey it. And uh, and of course, we got China weaponing up. We got North Korea weaponing up. Uh, uh, Iran's uh, damn close to a nuclear bomb. Let's, uh, let's hope we don't exterminate the world. Uh, the warmongering Democrats. Peace out. Stay free.